Hi, I'm, I'm Pete. I'm, as he said, I'm the eldest elder, and uh, <laughs> it's my turn to, to get to have a service, and I, I also always appreciate the opportunity, even though with that comes a heavy responsibility <laughs> that uh, none of us take like, lightly. Uh, first of all, uh, for you that came for your regular Wednesday night giggle fest, I'm sorry, but I'm not that type of teacher. <laughs> but uh, I, I do have, uh, you know, I'm just, when, when I get focused on something, I just am so one track that it hurts sometimes. But Isaac can do a good job of breaking it up and getting the humor in there. And to tell you the truth, after the second song tonight, we could have all just gone home. It had the whole message right in that. Because <laughs> it, it, it just... Uh, is awesome the way that works out. But tonight I want to speak to you about what is truth. And let me see, i got to get my thing here. And I hope, oh man, the technology is working and everything. <laughs> um, so Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? And Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king for this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth and everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, what is truth? So those of you who are here on Sunday mornings know that two weeks ago, Pastor Joe covered that passage of scripture. And, where, and I just want to kind of expand on that tonight. As a church leader, um, you see things, uh, experience things, where you see how Satan can just throw people off the track. It's, it's amazing, and so many people, there's a lot of people in the church that are just asleep to the whole thing, <laughs> and it's usually not the Wednesday night people. So for the Wednesday night people, I, I want to establish that foundation in you so that you can carry that foundation out and teach it to other people, especially the ones we come in contact with in our community. So what, what is truth? Well, is truth based on our feelings? Well, I hope not. There's nothing more fickle in life than feelings, so let's hope that it's not feelings. Is, is truth based on our circumstances or, or, or our, our experiences and how we interpret them? I hope not, because the Bible is pretty plain about how uh, we have a fallen nature and we cannot, by ourselves, interpret uh, these things as truth. So a lot of people say, well... I'll believe that's the truth when I see it. Well, really? Well, let's, let's explore that one just a little bit. Okay? So count the dots on that. Okay, now hopefully if you can see it. Uh, Charles, or, can we turn down the darken it a little bit just while I'm doing these, uh, these first few slides? Okay? When we get to the scriptures, we'll turn it back up. And uh, so... On this slide, when you look at the black dots, they disappear, right? Can everybody, you know, it might be hard to see in the back. But when you look at the black dots, they disappear. I, I tell people that's just like evolution. When you really look at evolution closely, it kind of disappears too. But that, that's a different teaching that I'm not doing tonight. But that, that's kind of weird that when you really look at the black dot, it disappears. So your eyes are doing some funny things there. Well, what about this one? Now, I just want to tell you, I didn't make anything move up there, but can you see some stuff moving? I don't know. In this big, bigger auditorium, you may not be able to see it. If you saw it on a computer screen, it'd all be swimming in front of your eyes. Same thing with this one. You just see it's shimmering. Okay? Now, there, there's no motion on the side. It's your eyes that are providing the motion. Our eyes just do, do these little twitches all the time. That's what gives us our perception. And uh, that's what causes that motion up there. But there's motion that, you know, isn't on the slide. That's the key. Can you really believe your eyes is what we're thinking about here. So um, let, let's go to these. How would you like to have that in your house? Okay. These are 3D floors. I'd never seen these before until recently. Somebody sent them to me. And so there's another one. And so your eyes are telling you, man, that looks pretty real. You know, that, that would be an awesome uh, bedroom if you could get to your bed. <laughs> You'd have to swim to it, I guess. And I, I like this one. 
except, you know, there's no privacy in that situation. But anyway, uh, <laughs> and this one too. So, I mean, that, that looks real, doesn't it? It looks real. It's just that somebody painted the floor. And it, that, that can fool us. Well, there's also these other ones that, you know, photo, photoshopping. If you haven't been convinced that you can be fooled by photoshopping up to now, let's just take a look at some of these, okay? And, and so it, if only we could have a road building program like this, you know, we'd, we'd save a whole lot of money, wouldn't we? But they can make it look so real. And uh, it, you know, it looks real, but you know it can't be real in these. You know, there, there's a disconnect there that your eyes tell you something, but your brain saying that can't happen, which is true. I wish it could, wish it could. We'd, see, we'd have all the teenagers around town doing that. <laughs> I, I use this one for when I, when I teach how fraudulent some of the schemes are in science nowadays that I just ha I say, how can those guys look themselves in the mirror? Well, maybe they can't. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, if you really thought that your eyes could tell you the truth, don't beat yourself up if you, if you know now that you're wrong, right? Okay, so obviously our eyes are not to be trusted. Even our eyes can deceive us, and it even says in the Bible that Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. So we truly cannot believe our own eyes even. So that, that's something that we have to remember. Okay, now we're going to go. You can turn the lights back up for me, please. Thank you. Um, and we're going to start off in Deuteronomy 32.4, if you'd like to turn there in your Bibles. And if, if you need a Bible, just raise your hand, and, and uh, somebody will bring you one. All my guys in the back row disappear, but Kenrick will bring you one if you need one, I think. Anybody need a Bible? Okay, go ahead. All right. <laughs> Now, when we, when we record these, um, you know, I don't know if people will be able to see this. Jesse, do you think people would be able to see those scriptures? Is this going to be on YouTube? This is going, no, you can't see that. Okay, so, so you'll wonder why I'm reading those, those other verses so that the people who want to get a CD, which I know people that are back there teaching that heard what I was talking about and they say they want to listen to it. So I'm going to read the other verses too and uh, I hope you'll bear with me in that. I just want, uh, what I did was I, I went into the, to the, I used just the blue letter Bible. I'm pretty simple, straightforward. I typed in truth. I went through over 200, I think it was 214 verses in the Bible that had the word truth in them. I, you have to go through and look at the context of each of the verses and pull out the one that are talking about the type of truth I'm talking about tonight, which is the truth of God's Word revealed to us. And, and you've got to pick those out and, and separate them from the ones that, that where people are just saying, I'm telling you the truth type thing, because that's, that's not what we're looking for. So what I've done is I've gleaned the ones that have to do with this topic tonight and put them down so that anybody who's interested in this topic and wants to survey it some more, that you can. And uh, <clears throat> so in, if you're at Deuteronomy 32.4, he is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are justice, a God of truth without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. So from the very first, as God is re revealing uh, in Deuteronomy the, the laws and so forth to the, to the Israelites, we see that they understand the nature of God, of the one true God. And these, these verses show us that they understand that he is a God of truth without injustice. He cannot lie, it tells us in the New Testament. So they understood that right from the beginning, that God speaks the truth. And so... For those who will be listening on CD, and, and you know, you guys, if you want to take a minute and look at a couple of these while I'm saying them, uh, feel free to do that. But from the book of Psalms, and David was a big one on God's word being truth, as we'll see here. These, these next few verses are all from the Psalms. It's chapter 31, verse 5, chapter 33, verse 4, chapter 85, verses 10 and 11, 
chapter 86, verse 11, chapter 100, verse 5, chapter 117, verse 2, chapter 119, verse 160, Psalms 146, uh, chapter 146, verse 6, and Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 1. So we see from right from the beginning that the the understanding is that God's word to us is truth and to be lived by and tr trusted that he is the rock that we can hold on to for a firm foundation. And so that's what we're going to be looking at a little bit more as we go through this tonight. Okay, so now, now let's go to a New Testament verse and it's John 1.14. So if you'd like to turn there, I'll wait for a minute. And John 1.14 is, is uh, a continuation of what you find in John 1, 1 through 3, which tells us that this word, that nothing was created that was created without the word doing it. And then we find out in verse 14 that the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So for us, uh, you know, for the Wednesday night crowd especially, I think that we all recognize that this is talking about the deity of Christ and that God came to earth in the flesh. And we know why he did that. So, but th this is the thing I want you to notice is that he's full of grace and truth. So what he spoke to us we can believe is the truth. Now, in Genesis chapter 1 is where the creation story is. And Jesus was the creator. Did Jesus come to the earth before Genesis was written? Or what, did he come to the earth after Genesis was written? It was after, of course. Moses had brought that to us many, a couple thousand years later, 4,000 years later, Jesus came to the earth. Could he have corrected any errors that were contained in those scriptures, you know, so that it could be the truth? He really could have, but he didn't need to because God's always preserved his word as truth. I have full confidence in that, and I'm not going to have time to go in, into that because uh, Rick's done that before. Isaac's done that before. Shown us, uh, Rick did the scarlet thread one time where we see that the blood of Jesus atoning for our sins runs through the whole Bible from Old Testament to New. And uh, in, in every book, I believe, Rick, if I remember correctly, that's in every book of the Bible. So we, ha we have those awesome things, and they're available to anybody who wants to listen to those. They're still on our website. So Jesus was that word. He came in human flesh and he brought us truth. And he was there for creation because he was the creator. So from the beginning of the Bible to the end, we can trust it as being truth. That's, that's our foundation is that we trust in the Bible being our truth. So let's, uh, let's see, I forgot to change my slide. And I'm sorry. I got to remember to do that. All right. And so... For those of you who are listening, here's a few other verses to show us that the truth is in Christ and Christ is in the truth. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 16, John chapter 1 and verse 17, John chapter 8 and verse 32, John chapter 14 and verse 6, and John chapter 17, 17 and 19, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 and James chapter 1 verse 18. And I forgot to give you guys a heads up that I was going to be doing this so that you could write those down you know as we went if you if you wanted to do further research on this. And of course most of us can you can get the blue letter bible for free on any uh internet service and as a download for as an app on your mobile devices. And, and you can do just what I did. Just look up the word truth and start gleaning for yourself what's there. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Isaiah 38, 19. Going back to the Old Testament for a minute. There's, there's something that's near and dear to my heart. I, I'm still teaching in the children's department. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I've always just had a heart for, for getting those kids solid in, in God's word and, and teaching them how to trust it and so forth. But the, the real place where it hits, where we need to do the teaching is in the home. 
in Isaiah 38, 19. The last time I spoke, I kind of made this a real big focal point. It's just one of my points this time, but I think it, we need to keep this fresh in our minds, especially the guys, the guys who have children. That the living, the living man, he shall praise you as I do this day. The Father shall make known your truth to the children. Okay, so the Father being the Father in the family. And he, he's going to make, truth, uh, make known God's truth to the children. Of course, in the Old Testament, that was the law that, that was given to the Israelites, uh, along with their experiences in the wilderness and so forth like that. And that's a, what we need to be doing. And, and it really... I, I think that just as Adam bore the ultimate responsibility for Eve being deceived in the garden, that God, you know, Eve was deceived, but Adam just plain disobeyed and and was rebellious. And think of manhood in, a, in America today. How many homes do we have where women are, are raising kids by themselves because the dads have abandoned them? Many times not p even paying the child support necessary to give those kids a decent home to live in. This, this is a huge problem in our, in our, in our culture. And, and I, I know here, I don't know about other nations as much as I know here. And, and we see that all over. And, and it's a heartbreaking thing that, that men and fathers are not taking their God-given responsibility to be the leaders, spiritual leaders in the home, to present the truths of God's word to their children and raise them in it to make sure that they have a foundation to fight against all that stuff that's out there in our culture because we know it's getting harder and harder to stay on the track in our culture today. So a lot of other verses for that. I'm going to say them for the people who are listening on the CD. Malachi chapter 2 verse 6. John chapter 5 verse 33. John chapter 19 verse 35. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8. Galatians chapter 2 verse 5. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 25. James chapter 5 verse 19. And 3 John chapter 1 verse 4. All of those will have, have to do with teaching. Not just the men in the home, but teaching, pastors teaching, and so forth. That if we don't teach God's word, it's not going to go forth. Whether people receive it or not is not ultimately our job. That's their decision. God gives us that free choice. Okay, John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. This tells us where we're at in the church today, I believe. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So, as you read those scriptures that I've given you, you're going to learn that they say over and over again that God's word is truth. That's where we find truth, in God's word. Okay, And uh, Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life, as we see in John 1.14. Or, uh, excuse me, yeah, I forgot to give that one earlier as a reference. Anyway, no. That's not John 1, 14. Somebody help me. 14.6. 14, 6. Thank you. Okay. It just flew out of my brain right there. Okay. So we, we, we have this thing that it's here in the church today that we worship him in spirit and truth. So we read God's word and we worship him in spirit, first of all, by worshiping as part of the spirit-led part of God, and, and then by worshiping him in the Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is our guide. We, we have him in us. 
When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells us. And he, the Holy Spirit can be our guide. He can be our helper. He can be our teacher. He can be all these things to us that if you don't have the Spirit, you don't have those things. Okay? So you can say, I know God's Word is true, but if, if you're not worshiping in Spirit and letting your Holy Spirit be there to help you learn those scriptures, you're not going to be on the right track. It's, it's just so many people get off the track because they're not worshiping in the Spirit. They're not worshiping according to God's plan. So the, the next one is a very serious one that we always have to recognize. That in John chapter 8, and verse 44, we have an enemy who is deadly, and he wants to kill us, and he wants to steal our joy. He, he, he's the one that seeks to mess everything up, to cause chaos in the world. Uh, I took Zachariah and Jeremiah last night, and we went to see a, a movie I didn't even know was at our theaters. Maybe you don't either. It's called The Young Messiah. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I, I looked at the review, and I thought it was going to be some worldly thing, mocking the Bible or something. Uh, no, it's about Jesus as a seven-year-old. <laughs> of course, there's no scriptural record of Jesus as a seven-year-old, so a bunch of it is conjecture. But the way they portrayed Satan was very, very on just the way he spoke things into the people's minds. They didn't even know where it came from, but it was always evil stuff. Go kill that person. Go say this about that person. Go ruin that person's reputation. All these things are coming from our adversary, the devil. So it says in 844, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. There's no better liar in the world than Satan. And you know what? He knows just where he can speak his lies into your mind. He knows just exactly the, your weakest area where he can hit you right there. I'll cover that again in just a minute. <clears throat> Did I forget to say for John 4, 23 and 24, I forgot to say the verses, didn't I? Is that correct? Okay. Let me say them for the people on the CD. John chapter 16, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. 2 John chapter 1, verse 2, and John chapter 14, verse 17. Okay, now a lot more that will tell you about this father of lies, Satan, and his effects on us. John chapter 8, verses 45 and 46. Romans chapter 1, verse 18, and 1, verse 25, and 2, chapter 2, verse 2. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Romans chapter 2, verse 8. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 and 12. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 18. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. James chapter 3, verse 14. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 2. First John chapter 1, verses 6 and 8. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. 1 John chapter 2, verse 21. So we have all these scriptures of God warning us against our enemy. I think he wants us to know about him. Okay? And, and now I, I'm not going into our spiritual armor, but one of them is the belt of truth that we're supposed to gird our waist with, the belt of truth. And that's what we're trying to do tonight. We're trying to get a grip on what is truth. So truth is found in God's word. It's given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit writing the, the scriptures through men. It, it is what can be trusted. And this is where we have problems. Trusting an ancient document like the Bible in our modern culture today. Well, the so-called 
theologians of today have problems with that themselves, and that's a sad thing. But let's look at a couple scriptures here. Okay, Satan was a master deceiver then in the Garden of Eden. And this is Paul writing this scripture in 2 Corinthians 11.3. He says, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I really like that verse for several reasons. First of all, Paul has a concern. What's his concern? Well, he believes in a real serpent and a real Eve and a real Garden of Eden. And he believes that that serpent deceived Eve. And he believes that that serpent can still deceive the church in his time. And this is a warning to us today, too, as we know. That our minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Jesus Christ. I love that verse because I'm so simple. <laughs> and I think simply, and I think in a straight line, logically. And, and uh, I, I just, we don't have to complicate things. I think God spoke it to us. We can read chapter 1 of Genesis, and we don't have to mess with it at all to try to make it say what science says. We can believe in the truth of chapter 1 of Genesis, that the world was made in six literal days, and God rested on the seventh, and that he made that week for us today that we still follow. Because if we don't take a day of rest every week, you guys know how burned out we get, how tired we get. we got to take that day of rest. It's God's plan. So right from the beginning, he showed us how he wanted to, to live by by modeling this, but how many people today just ignore those warnings and and run themselves into the ground because of it? Okay, but uh, the the gospel is so simple that people have to add on to it all the time. You know, they want to add on works, they want to add on circumcision, they want to add on to the gospel. What you got to do be saved? You can't. No. It, you, just believing in Jesus Christ and accepting him as your Savior, that's way too simple. There's got to be more to it than that. Listen to me. I've got a revelation of what we're supposed to do now. Uh, does the Bible also not say that there are no private interpretations? I'm going to tell you about a few I've run into, okay? Uh, after this next verse, I'll do this next verse first. He, he is still a master deceiver now. He deceived Eve in the garden, and he's still deceiving us today. He has many tools for doing it. Okay, so did it go to? Okay. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. And, and Pastor had this up there with the following two verses a couple of weeks ago. I use this one in almost all my presentations. Because the philosophy, and it's not really even a scientific theory, and if, if you don't believe that, then I... You need to come to the 411 room and let me show you why I'm saying this. I don't have time to go into that detail tonight. But the, there's philosophy and empty deceit according to tradition of men. That is the theory of evolution. That, that is so many things. That's the New Age movement today. There's so many things that are out there to deceive us in this modern day culture that it, if you're not on your guard, watching out for what he's doing, you can be taken captive by them. Okay, so we, we got to make sure that everything that we do and what we believe is according to Christ. And w so where do we le learn how to do it according to Christ? Well, that's in the Bible, of course. He told us what, what to do and what to believe and, and how to conduct our, our lives in the Bible. It's right there. That's our, our guidebook, Basic Instruction Before Leaving Earth, B-I-B-L-A, Basic Instruction Before Leaving Earth. That's that's what we look to for our guide. So, you know, it's, it's heart-rendering what we run into today. And, and uh, being in church leadership, we might get an extra little dose of it. But being retired and not having to be in the culture as much as some of you, you might be getting a bigger dose of it than even me, of what people believe. It is so amazing what people believe. Uh, let me give you some examples, Okay. Had a guy come to the God 411 room, came in, introduced myself, and uh, I said, how you doing? What brought you here tonight? He said, well, to tell you the truth, I'm a skeptic. And I go, well, that's wonderful. I'm glad you came. You know, I hope we can can uh, help you out, and if you've got questions afterwards, be glad to answer them. And, and so anyway, he, he listened to that presentation. We talked back and forth through emails for uh, quite a few emails. 
He asked me, so, you want, you, he never did come to Christ. You want to know why he didn't come to Christ? Because there's kangaroos in Australia. Kept him from coming to Christ. He doesn't think the Bible can explain how kangaroos got to Australia. And I, and I just simply told him, uh, evolution can't explain how kangaroos got to Australia. It can't even explain how life came on the earth. At least I can t tell you how life came on the earth. You can't even explain that. He never would give that idea up. No matter what I did to him. I, may, I, I said, okay, I'm going to make up a story because it happened in the past, so I wasn't there. But there was a flood, and the whole earth broke apart during that time, and Australia probably at that time separated, and there was probably, you know, the animals on the ark were the, were the ones that survived, but uh, there was an ice age after that. There were land bridges that aren't there now. So a marsupial could have migrated to Australia, and through time, through natural selection and adaptation, became what we call kangaroos today. You know? That's as good a story as anything evolution can make up. I mean, I just made it up, but that's what they got to do, too. They weren't there to see anything happen. So he never could get it. It is so frustrating because that man's bound for hell. He's got his own little personal God who's blessed him his whole life, and he thinks his God for, for stuff, but his God doesn't require one thing from him. You know, he just blesses him, and he gives thanks to him, and he's okay with it. And he's in his early 80s, and I have great concern for him. Whenever I think of him, I just, all you can do is pray that God will break down those strongholds. And uh, so that's one. UFOs is a big thing in our culture today. A lot of people are just dead set that this is a government deception, that we have had all kinds of UFOs and the government is just covering it up. Well, we saw a presentation, the last uh, Arizona Origin Science Association meeting that we went to, several of us here in the church, there was a guy who was there, he's called Evolution and the UFO Connection. And he showed how evolution has uh, really expanded this belief in UFOs that because the aliens seeded life on Earth. They can't explain how life came on the Earth. It's, it's mathematically impossible for life to just happen by accident. So now they brought, they've got aliens bringing it. Okay, So this, this guy went through step by step all the problems how far it is out there in space. There is no warp speed. That's a made up thing on Star Trek that everybody thinks is real. Okay, it, and, and he went through all this stuff and, and, and just showed us how UFOs are really demonic activity. And we, we're such a science fiction based culture now that people will believe Star Trek before they'll believe the Bible. That's where we're at. It's a sad thing. If you want to know more about that, I got that DVD of that presentation up in the God 411 room, and you can check it out up there. But um, we just watched it again on Monday night because he, that guy has so much stuff, you just can't take it in one sitting. You've got to see it again. So we did. Uh, in our culture today, we see that marriage is no longer between just a man and a woman according to what the culture wants to make it. You know, But biblically speaking, if we take our truth from the Bible, that marriage in its original sense, is between one man and one woman. And if, you know, if they got to have some sort of ceremony for the others, that's okay. Just give them a certificate of marriage, or a certificate of companionship or something. Just don't call it marriage. You know, I, I can't stop people from being immoral, but let's not get it mixed up. Uh, often, this is one of the big ones. We, we have people all the time who, who you know, are not married and they're living together. But sometimes there's reasons for that. But that's not God's plan for us, right? But the, here's the thing that gets you, is you talk to those people and, and you say, you know, what? can we do some counseling? Can we make this right? And the person will say, and it's usually the guy, God told me it was okay for me to do this. And, and he really believes it. He really believes that God told him that. So somewhere along the line, God changed his mind, if that's true. Well, um, you know, we got right now abortion uh, is a, a big thing in our culture. There, I guess that sometime in late June, there, there, we're going to have a big decision made on abortion. Uh, so you can be praying about that. Uh, they want to legalize drugs. We just want to use marijuana recreationally like we think it, there, there's nothing wrong with it when we know that there is stuff wrong with it, especially for teenagers. It arrests your social and physical development. Uh, 
It's the gateway drug. We know that. The statistics all show it. And yet, we're just going to have it used recreationally. We, even the medical marijuana, I got huge problems with because the people who get the medical marijuana, I don't think they use it all themselves. <laughs> I haven't got any proof for that, but I just know human nature that they're going to get someone, they're going to share it with their friends who are curious about it. So all these things going on out there and our kids, the world our kids lives in, ah. Oh. Well, nowadays if you go into a Target, you got to be aware of what's in the restroom ahead of you because we're changing those laws too. You guys may not even know about that. Target has made their restrooms, you know, where you can choose the gender that you identify with to go into the restroom that you choose to identify with. And uh, so that's the new thing in Target. So, woohoo, yay, our culture, we're so enlightened, okay? So uh, here's one that just is, everywhere I go and speak and I give a young earth view, I will inevitably have at least one person come up afterwards and give me the verse, 2 Peter 3, eight. With God, one day is as a thousand years. The earth could be old. With God, one day is as a thousand years. And I say, well, what's the second half of that verse? Oh, yeah, the second half of the verse is, and a thousand years is as a day. Well, what's the context of that verse? Well, the context of that verse is the coming day of the Lord. So why are you trying to interpret Genesis chapter 1 using something that's talking about the coming day of the Lord. Oh, another slight problem. Peter wrote in the, the New Testament is in the Greek language, and Genesis was written in the Hebrew language. So we're not even comparing like words because they're from two different languages, and yet that's the number one verse that people will quote to me time after time after time that the earth could be old because of that verse. So you've got to have good Bible scholarship. You've got to know how, how, how to look at the verses. And why does everybody believe that? It's because it's taught. People teach it. And when your teacher says it, it has an authority behind it. So that's why being up here is so, uh, such a big responsibility. Because I'm, I'm held accountable to teach the truth that God showed me and not to interject my own ideas into things. So that's why I try to do the best I can. <laughs> Because I know that song we sang, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. And my knee's going to bow before the Lord, and I'm going to give an account of what I'm doing in, in my ministry and in my life. So we need to keep that kind of uh, fresh in our mind. So God uses, I, I mean, excuse me, Satan uses all kinds of deceptive uh, means. So he, here's an important point. We can believe all the Bible all we want and say the Bible's true, but this is where you have to examine yourself, okay? When, when you're looking at a, a scripture and there's something in you saying, oh, that scripture's just not right, you know, you, you got to ask yourself, am I letting the scripture speak to me or am I speaking to the scripture? So that's why we got this huge problem in Genesis chapter 1 is that radiometric dating, which I have a presentation that shows that it's very unreliable and not to be taken seriously. And the theory of evolution has said that the earth is old, and they've interpreted the geological record that way. Well, you know, um, so people have taken that verse I told you about, and, they, and they've also taken a, a, a few other verses and pieced them together to make a kind of complex little path that you have to follow through the Bible and they got to be your guide. Okay, uh, to me that's not the simplicity of Christ. You know, they kind of left that behind when they start doing that. So going back to that verse of the simplicity of Christ, he doesn't want us to be deceived from that. All right. So let's go on to his deceptive tools. I'm sure you guys probably know most of these, but let's just talk about them anyway. That it says that there's going to be false prophets, and some of them are going to claim, claim to be the Messiah or to be Jesus, to be the Savior. We've had multitudes of those through history. And here's the sad thing. People follow them. They always get a few people to go with them. 
that there's going to be people out there who speak empty words and people out there who use persuasive words. And the empty words can be persuasive words when it's in the right person. Uh, you, you just got to be real careful and examine everything you hear. And, and remember, if it doesn't agree with what the Bible says, that you're going to reject it right off just out of hand. Human pride is a huge one. I, I've met a lot of people whose professor, their beloved biology professor, taught them this. Evolution is true, and they actually hold that person up above God, who's told us that everything reproduces after its own kind in Genesis chapter 1. So human pride just enters in so much. Sin itself can deceive us. The love of something that kind of goes along with the last one there. Um, loitering in the presence of evil company. And uh, Pastor Isaac's kind of brought up in his things the last couple of weeks that uh, evil company corrupts good manners, is it, Isaac? I think that's it. Okay. Oh, that reminds me. I do have a pee joke tonight. Yeah, I, I really... Do you know why you can't hear when pterodactyls go to the bathroom? <laughs> the P is silent. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> three in a row. We got three weeks in a row. Okay. <laughs> Probably not the best uh, vein to be going in three weeks in a row, but anyway, okay. Actually, Zachariah told me that last night, and I just hooted. So, so Satan's using these things. He's going to bring in evil men, people who intentionally lead people astray, and uh, he's going to bring in imposters. In that context of that verse is that we're not talking about in our culture. We're talking about in the church. That's why in the church now, you can hardly find churches that will hold to a literal view of Genesis. Most of our Christian colleges do not hold to the literal view of Genesis anymore. So all of us old dinosaurs that still believe in that view, you know, we're, we're fast becoming more and more in the mi minority. And so it, all these things are going on out there, false philosophies, false perceptions. The UFOs are false perceptions. They're satanic. They're, they're demonic to lead us astray, to get our minds on. So by the way, the Roswell thing, I forgot to mention that, that as our technology has gotten better, they, they actually see the seam in that rubber dummy that they said that they were, you know, I, I, I guess maybe the aliens were made out of rubber and everything. I don't know. But <laughs> now they've examined that, and, the, and the people have admitted it was a, a false. And, and they said, well, how, how come you never told everybody? Well, you know, it could happen, and so it's okay to think that it happened because it could happen. That's their answer. That, that's, that was in that DVD. So loving other things other than, more than the Lord is the number one thing. That's what I tell the U-turn guys when I teach them, especially if they come in for the first time. Until you love the Lord more than you love anything else in this world, you need to stay here. If it, does, if it takes two months or if it takes two years, it doesn't matter. you got to love the Lord more than you love the world, or you're going to go right back to your old stuff. It's, and we see that happen all the time. It's heartbreaking when it does. But our heart is, anytime those guys want to come back, they can. I mean, we got guys here tonight who have come back, and we're, we're so loving it when they do that. But Satan can take you down, man. You got to be on your guard against it. We got to do some things to, to prepare ourselves to stand up against the wiles of the devil. And so now comes my advertisement. <laughs> okay, first of all, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He wants to mess you up. Resist him, steadfast in the faith. Steadfast in the faith. Okay, where do we get our faith from? We get it from the Word of God. It's a gift from God itself, we, we learn. Okay, so... We, we see that we resist him being steadfast in the faith. <clears throat> so we study the truth in Scripture. We pray. We worship our Savior in spirit and truth, just like it told us. Fellowship in the body of Christ. You guys want to know something? If you go out there as a lone wolf, Satan will just mess you up real fast. The lone wolf that... <laughs> 
Okay, I forgot to tell you about this last one. This guy comes up to me and he goes, at the end of the service, all these guys, you know, come up. So this guy comes up to me and I've just talked about, the Bible talks about kinds. Everything reproduces after its own kind. There is no evolution according to God's word. So here comes the guy up afterwards. And he says, I know what the missing link is. So I'm already thinking I just wasted an hour. <laughs> okay. What's the missing link? It's Satan. Really? Yeah. If you'll sit down and study the Bible with me for a few hours, I'll show you it's through the whole Bible. Well, I read the whole Bible through several times, and I never came up with that idea. I've never heard anybody else that come up with that idea. How did you get that private interpretation, and why are you even thinking it's true when the Bible tells us not to do that? You see what I mean? You see how Satan can work? If, if we're not holding these scriptures in our mind and, and making it part of our fabric and our inner being, Satan's going to get in there and he's going to mess us up. I mean, this guy, I, I, I can't understand how people can do that, but he did anyway. Partake of as many discipleship opportunities as possible. I'm going to give you another one in just a minute. That was my advertisement. I got two sides ahead of myself. Value the input of church leaders and trustworthy brothers and sisters in Christ. You guys... You, you may get some advice that you don't agree with. And I, I'm not going to say that church leaders and uh, trustworthy brothers and sisters will be 100% all the time. But let me tell you something. Pastor Joe and Isaac are an elder here. We would never intentionally give you false information. We would speak the truth to you in love. And then you got to deal with that. Sometimes it's hard to deal with. Sometimes it's really hard to deal with. That's, but that's what we're about here at Calvary Chapel. We're, we're about teaching the Word. We're about living the Word. And we're about helping people live the Word. And that's what we want to do. That, that's how we maintain our truth in Christ is by doing those things. I, believe me, Pastor Joel is the, is the most, uh, you know, he doesn't let things go by when he sees a little anomaly here or there in the church. You know, he'll, he'll go and he'll talk to the person about it. And, and uh, many people take offense to that. But I'd rather that he did that than he let things go and let these problems build up in the church. And, and, and pretty soon you got chaos and everything's just cutting loose. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's hard to deal with sometimes. Sometimes it comes to all of us because we're human beings. We make mistakes. And, and a church leader or elder may come to us and, and deal with that. But please just prayerfully consider it. Okay, prayerfully consider it. Don't ju just walk out mad without at least prayerfully considering it when that does happen. And probably on a Wednesday night group, we got less people that would be in that type of a situation than in most, but it can happen to anybody. Even the elders, sometimes we, we find ourselves where we have to uh, be put back on the track a little bit. Well, starting Monday, there's going to be something called the Truth Project. And the Truth Project is something that's from Focus on the Family. Now, when you say Focus on the Family, uh, immediately people think of James Dobson, who had very little to do with this besides funding it. Okay? And there's... 12 lessons, but there's actually 13 because two of them are on science. First time I saw the Truth Project, this will be my fourth time through it. First time I saw it, I thought, I know they're going to mess up the science. I just know it. You know, it's just hard to get solid programs that don't mess up. No, he nailed it. Del Tackett, the guy that you'll see here in a minute, just sits and looks looks at the camera and he says, I know some of you out there believe in millions of years, but it's not in the scripture, and, and I hope you'll just prayerfully consider what this has to say. That's how we handle it. That's a great way to handle it. So we have the, this is a good deal with a lot of sensitive issues in our culture, but it starts off with veritology, what is truth, and it goes through scriptures that tell us what the truth is. It'll just kind of add on to what I'm saying tonight. So hopefully I'm leading from Pastor Joe's What is Truth from Pontius Pilate to expanding a little bit on it and giving you a bunch of scriptures on it. And then if you're interested, and especially 
it, if you feel like you need to be grounded in, in the foundations of the faith, this will be a great study for you. Okay? And because we're having it in the God 411 room, it's a chance for you to maybe bring a neighbor who's curious about God, but he doesn't really want to come to a quote unquote church service. It's an informal group. Uh, a good number to have is 10 to 12. Rich and Linda Watts are going to teach it, not myself. That They're going to teach it. I'll be there, but they're going to teach it. And uh, it, it just builds up f for the whole program. It gives you an awesome foundation of faith. Okay? So, Charles, uh, hopefully you had a chance to see some of those other ones. We're going to watch just a 4-minute and 13-second trailer so you get a, a little feel for this. Okay? Truth Project is actually designed for adults, but I believe that any uh, teenager, young teen, uh, 
that has a heart for the Lord will glean a lot of really good information from the series. So I, I would recommend if you if you know you have a child or a daughter that really hunger at and wants to know the truth, uh, loves the Word of God, bring them. You know, and the thing about the God Four One One Room, it's an informal setting. We're going to have refreshments. It's a half hour DVD a week, and then we have discussion. And we should be out of there by seven thirty, quarter till eight every week. It's not. It doesn't take a real long time to do. So I, I want to invite all of you. I want I want you to kind of think right now in your mind. You know, do you have, do you know somebody who's just kind of on the fringe of the church, who could really use something like this? Maybe you could bring them with you too, because there's a lot of people out there like that. <laughs> you know, even people that aren't in the church that are in our culture and are so deceived. If you could, if they, if what God would just uh, work in their hearts to bring them, uh, maybe you could do that. We. The thing about this uh, 411 room is that really uh, for the Monday night thing is just kind of works through us. For, through this body of believers is the main one that, that it works through. We have a couple other people that come, but uh, this is the main one. So I just want you guys to think about that. Pray about it for yourselves if it would be a benefit to you because can you discern the truth from the lies? That's the question. This will help you do it. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I just I thank you for this chance tonight to stand up. And, to, and Lord, just, just to say that you are the truth, and you've given us the truth, and you've preserved the truth through time. It's, that's your job. The only thing we have to do is believe. Heavenly Father, you know the world we live in. And even when we believe, it's so hard to discern the truth from the lies today. Just like the Photoshop photos, it looks so real. It's so believable. And unless we got the truth of the Word of God in us, we can't discern what's wrong about that picture. So, Father, just help us all to deal with that, Lord. The Truth Project isn't the only thing that people can uh, do in this area. Just studying all those other side scriptures that were given tonight might be a benefit to some. But Father, I just pray that through this uh, evening that you would be glorified, that uh, we might have a good representation of people come to the Truth Project who want to give themselves a strong foundation in God's Word in every area. And Lord, I just want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you for what you did for us, Lord. We owe you so much. And help us all to just focus on you and not our problems in this world. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>